Hi, this is Tanya K. Taylor with River Rain Creative Arts. Today I'm going to talk to you about out of the pawn shop into the palace. That's what Jesus did for us. When Adam and Eve sinned, then it gave Satan the authority over all the earth and the people and everything, and man fell into sin. So since then, every man, every baby, as innocent as they are, are born into sin. Now, children, before they're accountable, they go to heaven if they die early. But there is an accountability time for every person. So, we're like in the pawn shop until we are born again when the blood of Jesus cleanses us, redeems us from every curse, like it says in Galatians 3, 13 and 14, and brings us the blessing of Abraham. Thank the Lord. So I have some verses to share with you about that. But God shows and clearly proves his love for us, his own love for us, for the fact that while we were still sinners, Christ the Messiah, the anointed one, died for us. That's Romans 5, 8, Amplified Classic. So when we were sinners, and the whole world was sinners until people started believing in him, then, and that even with Adam and Eve and, and before Christ came to earth in body, the Holy Spirit gave people faith to believe in him. So that's another sermon. Anyway, thank goodness the Lord provided Jesus and Jesus decided to obey and shed his blood. So God gave Jesus. Jesus gave his blood. The Holy Spirit is the one that draws us and convicts us. And when we believe, it's a spiritual act and a mental act also. It's a choice because God has given every one of us a free will. When we choose Jesus, even when our mind's going, this is stupid, this doesn't make sense, I don't understand it, blah, blah, blah. When we let our faith ascend and we choose to believe, superseding our mind, any thoughts about it, then we are born again, praise God, translated from the kingdom of darkness, which is quickly coming to an end, into the glorious, victorious, eternal kingdom of light of the Son of God's love, the Lord Jesus Christ. We're redeemed from the curse. So I'm preaching to myself as well. We're redeemed from the curse. We're the blessed. We become royalty, kings and priests, seated with Jesus in heavenly places, ruling and reigning with him. Hallelujah. So we are redeemed just like someone goes to a pawn shop. And I hear they don't have pawn shops in other countries, but we do in the U.S., unfortunately, I guess. If someone needs some money, they go trade their item and the pawn shop owner gives them some money to hold that item until they come back and redeem it. If they don't ever come back and redeem it, meaning pay the money that the pawn shop owner wants, then they'll never get their item back. But if they come back and give him that money, they get the item back. They redeem it. It's restored to them. That's what Christ Jesus did for us, but with his blood, which is so much better than the blood of bulls and goats, and so much better than silver and gold, which perishes. Hallelujah. So, it's even the Lord's Spirit that helps us to choose Christ. He gives us not only the blood of Jesus, but he gives us the faith through his Spirit to choose him. For it is written in the Word somewhere, God is the author and finisher of our faith. So, God is doing everything, has done everything he possibly can to help you and me and the whole world have a wonderful life in him. He even helps us to choose him, then he rewards us for choosing he saves us. He is so good. How can we ever doubt him? I repent right now for ever doubting your goodness. One moment, Lord. And wow. If you were to watch me all day through a camera or whatever, you see I do that when I'm not in front of this camera too. So it's called a lifestyle of repentance. A lifestyle of sanctification where you're continually going, okay, Lord, thank you for being so good. And you're remembering and rehearsing and, and reminding the Lord of your his faithfulness to you and not every moment because God knows we're in these human bodies and we have to sleep and all that too and we have other things we have to think about and say and do but just being in a lifestyle of worship thanksgiving remembrance of his goodness that that helps us in, in reminding ourselves that without him we are nothing we can do nothing but when we're born again we are his precious children, and we are his heirs, heirs of salvation. Hallelujah. And even before we're born again, he loves us all. 
That's what that verse says. He covered the whole earth, every person that would ever be born, even when we were still sinners. He loved us. He forgave us of everything we would ever do wrong, and he knows it all from beginning to end, even before the world began. He chooses, he chose to forgive us anyway and provide the way for us to go straight to him and have a direct relationship with God the Father. Jesus is our high priest. We don't need any other priest. We don't need to go to any other man. We have a direct line to God the Father, the Holy One, through Jesus Christ the Son, our Savior, our high priest. And here is another verse. He even helps us to desire to be clean. He created every man to know him, every person, every boy, girl, man, woman, everybody. And he created us in his image and his likeness. And he wanted fellowship with us. That's why he created Adam and Eve after he created all the beautiful earth and put them in it. Everything was perfect. They were going to have light work. It was not going to be hard. They were going to have perfect communion with the Lord, and they did until we sinned. So we've been trying to get it back ever since. But when we're born again, we have that communion. We have to get rid of the worldly distractions and just he helps us to desire to focus on him and choose to spend time with him. Just like any other relationship, only the relationship that's vertical with you and God is numero uno, should be number one. And the more we put in first, the more that we're rewarded. Now he knows we have to we work, we take care of the house, we definitely take care of our families and all that good stuff. But we can cultivate a lifestyle where we're conscious of him throughout the day. And even during the night when we wake up. And we just, he's love. He's so good. We love the Lord. We love him. He loves us. He is love. 1 John 4, 8. So here's another verse. Because we're talking about being out of the pawn shop into the palace. So sometimes when things go to the pawn shops, if you walk in, they're, sometimes they're clean, but a lot of times they're not. And the stuff sits there and gets dusty, dirty. And so if someone never picks it up, then it's just going to be trashed or sold cheaper or whatever. Anyway, the point is we were dirty, filthy creatures, sinful until the blood of Jesus washes us. And then we choose, by his help, to continually cleanse ourselves from worldly junk and just stuff that would come between us and God. Just like any relationship, there could be stuff that comes between you and your husband, you and your kids, you and a co-worker or anyone else, and you have to choose to cleanse yourself and pray for them to cleanse themselves. Here's the verse. It is 2 Timothy 2.21, Amplified Classic. So whoever cleanses himself from what is ignoble, that means not noble, um, unclean, who separates himself, or herself, of course, from a contact with contaminating and corrupting influences. This could be wrong relationships. This could be drugs or alcohol or smoking or abusing your bodies, anorexia, whatever, eating too much food, eating not enough food, making other people idols, too much television, too much gaming, too much internet, wrong internet sites, wrong telephone, wrong texting, just making the the phone an idol or anything anything sports anything besides God first and he doesn't mind us enjoying all these things in the right measure then these can all be contaminating corrupting influences that can separate us from God that's the point they can become idols so an idol is anything that comes before our relationship with God whether it's money trying to make too much money by working way too many hours or something like that so when we separate ourselves from these things by his help and he'll help us we will then ourselves himself or herself be a vessel set apart and useful for honorable and noble purposes consecrated and profitable to the master who is Jesus fit and ready for any good work so what that means is these people that you see in ministry most of them have been years in the making of growing in the relationship of sanctity and consecration and obedience and faithfulness to Christ. It didn't just happen overnight. Oh no. The moment we're born again, we're like spiritual babies. We have to start learning how to follow the Lord, how to obey, how to hear the Lord. And that comes through Bible reading, being in a church that believes the whole Bible, not just the New Testament, or not just the part without red letters, the whole Bible. Worship, prayer, which is talking to God, 
there are formal types of prayer, but communicating with God and just repenting when he shows you something to change. That means stop doing it. Or it can be to start doing something he's been telling you to do and you haven't done. So and we're all, we all should be working on stuff, including me. So he is a good father. He's very patient and faithful and long-suffering and generous and helpful. And he helps us. Like Jesus told me one time, the Holy Spirit, he said, if you just ask me, I'll help you with anything. And he will. We have to be quiet and realize that he's helping us when we have an idea or we're like frustrated, we don't know how to solve something. But then an idea comes and that fixes it. That's the Lord. He's a good daddy and he's always with us. Once we're born again, he's inside of us helping us. Hallelujah. And all who call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Romans 10, 13, I think it is. So he's everywhere. And yes, we can worship God in the woods or at the lake. But you know what? He tells us to go to church. It doesn't have to be in a building. He says to assemble yourselves together. Get in a group of like-minded believers where the Word of God is really taught, the full Word of God, where Jesus is welcomed as Lord, where the Holy Spirit has freedom. And that's what he's talking about. It doesn't have to be in a building. But usually we like air conditioning and heat, so we cover from the rain. Another sermon trying to start. Okay, here we go. Here's another verse for you. Uh, oh, the spirit of truth is the one that leads us into truth about error. He shows us the truth of God, the good part, and the part we need to change and stay away from. So this is, let's see, this is John 16, 13 through 14, Amplified Classic. It says, but when he, the spirit of truth, the truth-giving spirit comes, and that is the spirit of Jesus, because Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, he will guide you into all the truth, the whole full truth. Amen. God is not hiding anything from us. He's hiding things for us. Revelation, which means that's the true enlightenment, not what the world does, not all that yoga mess or whatever, nirvana, whatever. None of that is God. God is the truth, and he'll show you the truth about all those things. He will not speak his own message on his own authority. He will tell whatever he hears from the Father. He will give the message that has been given to him. And he will announce and declare to you the things that are to come that will happen in the future. He will show us the future that we need to know if we ask him and we listen and wait on him. He will honor and glorify me. And this is the Bible talking about glorifying the Lord because he, uh, glorifying Jesus, glorifying the Father, because he, the Spirit of truth, who is the Holy Spirit, will take up, receive, draw upon what is mine, Jesus's, and will reveal, declare, disclose, and transmit it to you talking to his disciples and if we know Jesus and we're following him we are a disciple you're not a disciple until you're truly going to a Bible believing church reading the word worshiping praying if you're not actively seeking God every day you're not a disciple sorry if that's bad news but you can change today and all of us can do better or maybe you're a disciple who's backslidden just get back on the track he'll help you here we go here's another one this is Ephesians 5, 8 through 11. For you were once darkness, but now you're a light in the Lord. Yes, when we become one with the true light, who is Jesus, when we're born again, we become light in the Lord. Live as children of light, for the fruit of the light consists in all goodness, righteousness, and fruit, uh, truth. And find out what pleases the Lord. How do you find that out? You pray, you read the Bible, you go to church, you get with like-minded people, you stay away, you start eliminating the corrupting influences of the world and there are good programs on TV and the internet it was all made for God and his people to start with there are good movies good books you just have to be selective and the Holy Spirit will help you with that he'll also take away a piece of your reading or watching something that's not the best like he's done for me many times in my life or he'll he'll convict you before you even buy it and go you'll feel this uh-uh inside he'll help you he's so good especially if you want to know so verse 11 says, Have nothing to do with the fruitless deeds of darkness, but rather expose them. And what are we talking about? Once you're born again, you're out of the pawn shop, out of the curse, out of the devil's grasp, unless you keep giving them place. But once you're born again, then the Holy Spirit helps you to keep desiring to draw close to Christ, and he, he helps you do that. 
and he helps you desire to get rid of the wrong stuff and follow the right. He is the right, the right light. So he helps you make these choices. You're out of the poncha, into the palace. And of course, a lot of Christians aren't taught this stuff like I wasn't for a few decades. But I, the Lord helped me start learning because he knew I wanted to learn. I was born again since I was nine, but I had all this mess in my life and I was frustrated and scared and just confused and angry because I'm like, I know I'm born again. Why is there all this mess in my life? Why is the devil having his way? Well, you have to learn. You have to learn how to not give the devil place. You have to learn how to give God place. Get rid of the junk. And you have to learn how to tell the difference between what is good and evil. So people in different levels of government and not just in America, but if they don't know the truth or they're blinded, then they think they call good evil and evil good. It, you have to learn and you have to desire. The Holy Spirit will answer prayers as we pray for our leaders and others, spouses, whatever, bosses, whatever. God will help open their eyes with our prayers. So that's another sermon too. Okay. So if you're feeling like you're in the pawn shop after you've been born again, that's a lie of the devil. I've had to experience that too. You don't have to experience it, but if you don't know the truth, the devil will just he'll keep lying and then he'll blame God and try to make you mad at God. Don't do that. God is not your problem, never. He's always the right answer and he loves you. So the Lord took our junk. He took our shameful, dirty coat, tattered and torn. He gave us his beautiful robe of righteousness. Isaiah 61 says, I ten. I delight greatly in the Lord. I rejoice in the Lord my God. He has clothed me with the garments of salvation and arrayed me in a robe of righteousness. And there's more to it, but I love that part. And that's the truth. So, here is Romans 3.22 to wrap this up. For no person will be justified, made righteous, acquitted, and judged acceptable in his God's sight by observing the, whole, by observing the works, works prescribed by the law. No. In other words, we cannot work and be good enough to earn our way to heaven. No, it comes by faith in the shed blood of Jesus Christ on the cross over 2,000 years ago alone. That is it. That equalizes everyone. And the Lord will help you believe. So we're not justified by that because it says the real function of the law is to make people recognize and be conscious of sin. Not mere perception, but an acquaintance with sin which works towards repentance, faith, and holy character. Namely, the righteousness of God, which comes by believing with personal trust and confident reliance on Jesus Christ, the Messiah. So, see, you don't have to take my word for it. It just got backed up right there, Romans 3, 21. Namely, the righteousness of God, which comes by believing with personal trust and confident reliance on Jesus Christ, the Messiah. I just read that. And it is meant for all who believe, for there is no distinction. I apologize. That was Romans verse 22 amplified classic so okay I said one more I, I'm like my, my pastor in some ways it's all good and we want to keep cheering so here's the last one because when we get into the palace we're seated with Jesus we have authority we have rule over the demons and over a lot of stuff in this world and you have to learn that and walk in it and he'll help you so here's the last one Hebrews 7 25 26 amplified classic it says Therefore, he, talking about God, is able to save to the uttermost, completely, perfectly, finally, for all time and eternity. Well, talking about Jesus. They are one. God the Father, Jesus the Son, and the Holy Spirit. They all are one. Three in one. So, God is in heaven forever. He's a spirit. His spirit is everywhere. The Holy Spirit. Jesus is his son that came to earth bodily and died bodily so that no one can say that Jesus didn't really die. His body was broken and died so ours could be redeemed. Another sermon there. And then he rose again bodily and was seen by many, over 500 people, I believe. And he was on the earth talking, walking, eating, preaching, teaching, exhorting for 40 days in his body. No blood, because he shed all his blood, but with the glory. He was flesh and bone. Go check it out. So here's your last one, Hebrews 7, 25 and 26. Therefore, he, Jesus, is able to save to the uttermost, completely, perfectly, finally, for all, finally, for all time and eternity, 
those who come to God through him. So you have to come to God the Father through Jesus. He is the only way. He's the door. He's the way, the truth, and the life. John 4, 6, 14, 6, I believe. Go check it out. I may not know the address exactly, but I know it's in there. Praise God. <laughs> Since he, Jesus, is always living to make petition to God, to our high priest, and to intercede with him and intervene for them, us humans, people. And Jesus is a man. Still, there's an anointed man in the Godhead. Hallelujah. Here is the high priest, Jesus, perfectly adapted to our needs, as was fitting. He's holy, he's blameless, he's unstained by sin, separated from sinners, and exalted higher than the heavens. Just reading one verse in the Bible alone can help you start worshiping more deeply than you ever have before. So remember, if you are born again, you're out of the pawn shop, into the palace, no matter how you feel, what the circumstances are. You have to keep believing that. Find scriptures that back that up, speak them out, meditate on them. It's not meditation. It's not, mm, that's not meditation. That's stupidity. I said it. Meditation is taking the word of God and the things of God and how good God has been to you and mulling them over, talking about them to yourself, speaking them out loud, thinking about them, praying about them. That's meditation. Everything the world does... Jesus thought of it first and created it first. He's the creator of Elohim. That's another sermon too. The world, the devil just, he can't create anything. The devil just takes God's stuff and perverts it. But God's taking his nation, the United States of America, and this world back. Because the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof and all the peoples therein. You watch. You watch. Hallelujah. Remember, if you're born again, then you're out of the pawn shop into the palace. You're redeemed by the blood of the Lamb, Jesus Christ. If you're not, all you have to do is go, Jesus, I may not understand it, but I choose to believe in you. I ask you to forgive me of my sin. I believe that you died on the cross for my sin and shed your blood over 2,000 years ago. I need you to forgive me and be my Lord and Savior forever. I receive you. I renounce all the works of Satan in my life. I ask you to start teaching me your ways. Show me the right Bibles. Bible, Bibles. There's online Bibles. You may want more than one. Bibles. The right church. How to pray, how to worship, I receive you and I thank you for it in Jesus' name. That is it. It's a legal thing in your heart and out of your mouth. A legal, spiritually, life-changing transaction. Go for it. He'll help you. Be out of the palace, be out of the pit, out of the project, into the palace today.